Now that the leader has completed his plan, he is ready to issue the operations order. For this op order, the leader has continued to utilize a planning bay technique, modeled after those used in Ranger School. These visual aids follow the five paragraph op order format. Key pieces of information are displayed on boards as visual aids during the brief. Typically, op orders are issued verbally. Good afternoon, I'm Lieutenant Madden. I'll be your platoon leader throughout the duration of this operation. Start off with roll call, platoon sergeant, weapons, first, second, third, FO, RTO. And we've got pen, pencil, ranger handbooks, maps, protractors. Good. All right, please hold all questions to the end. This is Operations Order 18-005, Anthem Restoration. References will be Yakima Training Center Military Installation Map. One of the 161 Operations Order 18-005, Patriotic Revival, and Apex Company Operations Order. Time zone used throughout this operation will be uniform. Task organization for 1st Platoon Apex Company. 2nd Squad, you're the decisive operation. Your task as being the Assault 1 element. Third squad, you're shaping operation one, your task is being the assault two element. Weapon squad, you're shaping operation two, your task with support. And first squad, you're shaping operation three, your task with security. Allow me to orient you to the map. Here is north, south, east, and west. Boxing you into our higher headquarters area of operation. For the northern boundary, it is vicinity of the 9-4 northing. Terrain feature is the Saddle Mountains. To the south, it is vicinity of the 8-6 northing. Terrain feature is the unnamed road. For the eastern boundary, it is vicinity of the 7-5 easting. Terrain feature is Wanafum Lake. And for the western boundary, it is vicinity of the 0-0 easting. Terrain feature is Interstate 82. Enemy car, CAS. No enemy close air support in our area of interest. Artillery, enemy 82mm mortars can range our AO and our company objective. Rotary wing, no enemy rotary wing assets within our area of interest. And reinforcements, the enemy can reinforce on our objective with a platoon size element within 30 minutes if they are mounted, which is the most likely option, or within 3 hours if they are dismounted, which is the least likely option. Area of operation, our company AO is bordered by... The northern boundary, 9-4 northing, terrain feature is the Saddle Mountains. To the south, again, we have the 8-6 northing, terrain feature is the unnamed road. To the eastern boundary, the boundary that we share with Bravo Company, it is vicinity of the 1-0 easting, terrain feature is firing point 1093. And the western boundary is still the 0-0 easting, terrain feature is Interstate 82. Our current location, we are currently located here at Alpha Alpha Black, vicinity 10 Tango, Gulf Sierra. 068921. Tracing and familiarizing you through our objective, we have three natural terrain features are Manastash Ridge to the northwest, Badger Gap to the northeast, and North Fork Moon Creek going through the middle of our AO. Three man made terrain features we have Badger Pocket Road running north south, Hanson Creek Road running east west, and Silica DZ to the southwest. Grand weather, OCOC analysis from start point to the objective. As far as obstacles go, we have Hanson Creek Road, Badger Pocket Road, North Fork, Luma Creek, IEDs at the intersections potentially, and counter mobility obstacles on the main routes. As far as avenues of approach go, Hanson Creek Road and Badger Pocket Road can both accommodate multiple vehicles. Unimproved roads and trails allow travel for some vehicles. Key terrain, there's the Ford at Badger Pocket Road, Cindy Gulf Sierra 0515-8980, as well as Ridge 887, which provides unimpeded observation as well as early warning. For observation, as previously stated, Ridge 887 provides maximum observation out to 20 kilometers, and Manastash Ridge provides maximum observation as well. For covering concealment, creek beds, depressions, IV lines, and hills are the only covering concealment in the area. On the objective, there are possible IEDs in the roads surrounding Objective Gold, which limit the freedom of maneuver. For avenues of approach, there are unimproved roads and trails around the objective, which allow travel for some vehicles and speeds up to 35 miles an hour. 
key terrain around the objective, Manastash Ridge to the north, Senegal Sierra 0293, as well as the local village where the objective is located, which allows cover and concealment and is easily defensible. For observation on the objective, 500 to 1,000 meters on average and up to 20 kilometers on the ridges and high ground, including Manastash Ridge. Cover and concealment, the local village provides cover and concealment for both ground and air. And from the objective out to battle position 2, there are possible IEDs and obstacles impeding the movement south. Avenues of approach are Badger Pocket Road as well as unimproved roads which allow vehicles to reach speeds up to 55 miles an hour. Key terrain is Ridge 887 which provides unimpeded observation as well as early warning. For observation, Ridge 887 will allow maximum observation of the AO as well as Badger Pocket Road. And for cover and concealment, the creek bed that runs through battle position 2 will allow some concealment. Weather and light data, temperature will be a high of 78 degrees, low of 53 degrees, sunrise will be at 0508, sunset will be at 2056, BMNT will be at 0429, EENT will be at 2135, moonrise will be at 0520, moonset will be at 2054, Illumination will be at 75%, moon phase at full, wind speed will be 3 to 5 miles an hour from south-southeast, and precipitation will be 0%. Visibility effects on friendly. A high illumination will allow us to see more through our nods. Early moonset time will increase our chances of moving undetected to the objective, and the fog may limit visibility during early morning hours, which will increase our chances of having a successful raid. Effects on the enemy. If the enemy does have any night vision capabilities, our advantage will be negated. Fog during early morning hours may inhibit our ability to observe the enemy movement on the objective, which gives them the advantage there. Winds. Effects on friendly. The wind speed is not strong enough to mask dust signature from vehicles, which gives us the advantage, allowing us to detect the enemy vehicles much more easily. When we deploy smoke, it will billow in the direction of the enemy, which gives us greater concealment on the objective. Effects on the enemy, because of the direction of the wind, the enemy will be able to detect us through smell and sound much easier. Temperature and humidity, effects on friendly, the temperature will be high enough to where increased water consumption will occur, and dismounted movement will be slower because we'll be in full gear. Pack snivel gear, but do not wear it during the movements, and pack a light bivy sack for the off. Effects on enemy, the enemy does not wear as much clothing or PPE as we do, so they won't encounter the same constraints to the same degree that we will. The temperature is not too cool at night, so the likelihood of night patrols is increased. Cloud cover, there is no cloud cover during the operation, which means no ceiling for ISR or CAS. Effects on enemy, there is no cloud cover, which means greater visibility to the naked eye, so they'll be able to detect us easier. As far as precipitation goes, effects on friendly, the lack of precipitation means that the creek beds and the ground in our AO will be dry. We will have maximum freedom of maneuver and we will be able to detect the enemy vehicles from far away. The enemy will be able to detect or track us easier because of our footprints. It will be harder for us to move quietly if the ground is dry, which gives them a slight advantage. Civil considerations, A scope. Areas, some small villages located throughout the AO and the AOI. City of Yakima is located 13 miles away from the AO. Structures. Structures are mostly single-story mud huts and some repurposed connexes. No sewer, water, electricity, academics, trash, medical, or services. Some communication towers and power plants are within our area of interest. Capabilities. Local police and fire department within Yakima have been overwhelmed by the ALF. Organizations. No UN, NGO, or OGO. No militia on site, however, Yakima does have a significant gang presence. People. All civilians within our AOI have fled to the north and are outside of our AO. Events. No significant routine, cyclical, or planned events during the operational window. Enemy forces. General enemy situation. Aragon Liberation Front forces are operating within AO Badger in a decentralized, roughly platoon-sized element. They will attempt to disrupt supply lines and engage unit patrols while they are in a static or defensive posture. Disposition. The battalion scouts have spotted a mortar section consisting of one truck with two 82mm mortar tubes moving south to north along Badger Pocket Road 
and west to east along Hanson Creek Road, trying to identify adequate firing points for future operations. Light infantry and counter-mobility teams have been identified in the area through human intelligence and ISR assets. Their primary mission is to conduct counter-mobility operations within our AO. Composition and strength. The platoon-sized ALF element operating in the company AO has been sending out individual squads to conduct harassment operations within our AO. ALF forces utilize captured Desert Tan Humvees and civilian pickup trucks, both of which can carry up to four personnel in the cab and can pull a trailer or towed weapon system. It will be critical that our forces properly identify them as threat vehicles prior to engaging them. The ALF forces have been in multiple combat engagements with the local 9th Dakistani Infantry squads, which have degraded their equipment, personnel, and morale to 95% strength. These ALF squads have been working decentralized from its main ALF rifle platoon and have not been resupplied within the last 36 hours. This is why sustainment convoys are direly needed and are very probable to occur. All right, breakdown of enemy weapons by type. They have eight RPG-7 victors per platoon. Max effective range is 300 meters. The munition is 85 millimeter heat rounds, and they have one to two per squad. RPK-74's max effective range is 800 meters. Fires a 5.45 millimeter round, similar to a saw. There are eight per platoon and one or two per squad. Next is the AK-74's. Max effective range is 450 meters. Those also fire a 5.45 millimeter round. This one's similar to an M16. There are five of them per squad, so a total of 20 per platoon. Next up is the SVD sniper rifles. Range is 1300 meters. They fire a 7.62 by 54R, similar round used by our M2010s. There are four of those per platoon, one per squad. Then there are M14s. Range is 460 meters. Those fire a 7.62 by 5.1 NATO. Same round used as our M110s. There are eight of those per platoon, two per squad. And finally, there's the 82 millimeter artillery. Max effective range of 5,600 meters. Those fire 82 millimeter high explosive dual purpose rounds, similar to our 81s. And there are two batteries of those to the south. Capabilities by warfighting function. Intelligence. Their intelligence collection relies heavily on the use of observation posts and active squad size reconnaissance patrols. They have little by way of local support and civilian informants. OPs will be no more than two men with small arms within supporting distance from the main body. Maneuver. Squads may be either mounted or dismounted. They can reinforce one another by vehicle within 30 minutes and by foot within one hour. The trigger for reinforcement will be any enemy element becoming decisively engaged and cannot break contact. Fire support. Enemy mortars, 82 millimeters, usually located within 1,000 meters of the command and control sites. These mortars have the ability to range approximately 5,600 meters. Time for rounds on target is generally 20 minutes from call for fire. Due to critical shortages, the enemy will only use indirect fire on a squad size or greater element. Concept of the operation. Enemy COA statement. The purpose of this operation is to attack coalition forces in order to deny their freedom of maneuver to the south. They will accomplish this by conducting an infiltration. Decisive to this operation is the destruction of two U.S. squads. This is decisive because it is intended to delay our progress and allow enemy reinforcements to arrive and destroy the remainder of our unit. First squad, the decisive operation, conducts an attack vicinity objective silver in order to deny coalition forces. Second squad, shaping operation one, conducts a search and attack to clear vicinity objective bronze in order to allow freedom of maneuver for the DO. Third squad, shaping operation two, defends in strong point in order to protect the platoon headquarters and resupply to the decisive operation. The purpose of maneuver is to deny U.S. forces freedom of maneuver south. The purpose of fire support is to disrupt and fix U.S. forces for enemy counterattack. Scheme of maneuver. Most probable course of action. The ALF squads will be mobile throughout our AO, mounted or dismounted, attempting to locate mortar firing points for attacks in the company Alpha Alpha, and running money or drugs through the AO in order to gain the resources necessary for future attacks. If the ALF squads identify or encounter U.S. forces, they will most likely call for fire and attempt to disrupt our forces without becoming decisively engaged. Most dangerous course of action. 
The ALF will mass a platoon size or larger attack on stagnant patrols using direct and indirect fire. If a point of failure is located during reconnaissance on the company Alpha Alpha, the ALF will mass a platoon plus in order to attempt to overrun our security personnel and conduct a coordinated attack on our Alpha Alpha. Higher mission, two levels up. One of the 161 Brigade Shaping Operation attacks to destroy Aragon Liberation Front Forces in AO Highlander, no later than 13, 1800 uniform, August 2018, in order to prevent the northern advance of ALF within the town of Yakima and secure the Brigade Decisive Operations eastern flank. Intent to destroy all ALF elements in AO Highlander and establish block along phase line Seahawks. Commander's intent. Purpose. The purpose of this operation is to destroy all ALF elements in AO Highlander. We are the Brigade Shaping Operation 1 with the expanded purpose of supporting 3 the 161, the Brigade Decisive Operation, in passing U.S. forces south of Face Line Seahawks through AO rifles. We will achieve this by infiltrating south and attacking all ALF held areas within our AO, followed by blocking all northern movement of ALF within our AO and securing 3 the 161's eastern flank. Key tasks. Destroy all ALF and AO Highlander. Secure ALF key logistical and C2 nodes. Establish block along phase line Seahawks. Minimize civilian injury and collateral damage. End state. At end state, one of the 161 has destroyed all ALF within AO Highlander. Blocked all ALF movement north of phase line Seahawks. Secured three of the 161's eastern flank and all civilians in the AO have been safeguarded back to the division rear. Higher Headquarters, one level up. Alpha Company, one of the 161, the Battalion Decisive Operation, attacks to destroy ALF forces in AO Badger, no later than 13, 1500 uniform, August 2018, in order to prevent the northern advance of ALF within the town of Yakima. Commander's intent, purpose. The purpose of this operation is to destroy all ALF elements on objective goal and block all ALF movement north along phase line Seahawks in order to secure the eastern flank of 3 of the 161, the Brigade Decisive Operation, allowing them to pass follow-on forces south. Key tasks. Destroy all ALF on objective goal. Block all ALF movement north of phase line Seahawks. End state. At end state, Apex Company, one of the 161 infantry, has destroyed all ALF within our AO, blocked all ALF movement north of phase line Seahawks, secured 3 of the 161's eastern flank, and all civilians in the AO have been safeguarded back to the division rear. Mission of adjacent units. Second platoon, Apex Company, one of the 161, Company Shaping Operation 1, attacks, ambush to destroy ALF on objective Silver. Vicinity Golf Sierra 007907, no later than 13, 0300, uniform, August 2018 in order to provide the company decisive operation freedom of maneuver. Third platoon, Apex Company, one of the 161, minus company shaping operation two, attacks, ambush to destroy ALF on objective bronze, vicinity Golf Sierra 045904, no later than 13, 0300 uniform, August 2018, in order to provide the company decisive operation freedom of maneuver. First Squad, 3rd Platoon, Apex Company, one of the 161 is the company reserves. Mission. 1st Platoon, Apex Company, one of the 161, the company decisive operation. Attacks to destroy ALF forces on objective gold. Vicinity 10 Tango, Golf Sierra 030897. No later than 13, 0600 uniform, August 2018 in order to prevent the northern advance of ALF within the town of Yakima. I say again, 1st Platoon, Apex Company, one of the 161, Company Decisive Operation, attacks to destroy ALF forces on objective goal, vicinity 10 Tango, Gulf Sierra, 030897, no later than 13, 0600 uniform, August 2018, in order to prevent the northern advance of ALF within the town of Yakima. Execution. My intent. Purpose. The purpose of this operation is to destroy all ALF elements on objective gold and block all ALF movement north of phase line Seahawks in order to secure the eastern flank of 3 the 161, 
the Brigade Decisive Operation, allowing them to pass follow-on forces south. Key tasks. Destroy all ALF on objective goal. Block all ALF movement north of phase line Seahawks. End state. At end state, 1st Platoon Apex Company, one of the 161, will have destroyed all ALF on objective gold, has established in BP-2 to block all ALF movement north of phase line Seahawks in order to secure the Brigade Decisive Operations eastern flank. Friendly casualties have been minimized, and all civilians encountered in the AO have been safeguarded back to the division rear. Concept of the operation. Co statement. The purpose of this operation is to destroy all ALF on objective gold and block all northern movement of ALF across phase line Seahawks. Decisive to this operation is the destruction of ALF on objective gold. This is decisive because objective gold is the C2 and logistical hub of ALF currently operating in AO Badger. We will accomplish this operation by conducting a frontal attack. At 12-2300 Uniform August 2018, First Platoon, our platoon, will depart from Alpha Alpha Black and move to platoon attack position. No later than 13-0600 Uniform August 2018, First Platoon will conduct a raid on Objective Gold. The mortar section will provide indirect fire on Objective Gold to mass combat power at the decisive point. Following the attack of Objective Gold and no later than 13-1500 Uniform August 2018, First platoon will establish blocking positions along phase line Seahawks. We will accept tactical risk by moving dismounted through non-vegetated terrain from the company Alpha Alpha to the platoon objective. We will mitigate this risk by moving during hours of limited visibility and maintaining open communication with battalion scouts in and around AO Badger. This operation has four phases. Preparation, infiltration, attack, and defense. Task and purpose of decisive operation and shaping operations. The decisive operation, second squad. Your first task is to destroy, raid, ALF on objective gold. Purpose is to prevent the northern advance of ALF in the town of Yakima. Your second task is to block ALF on axis red 2 at battle position 2 along phase line Seahawks in order to prevent ALF from enveloping the brigade decisive operation. Shaping Operation 1, 3rd Squad. Your first task is to destroy, raid, ALF on Objective Gold. Purpose is to provide the platoon decisive operation freedom of maneuver. Your second task is to block ALF on Axis Red 2 at Battle Position 2 along Phase Line Seahawks in order to prevent ALF from enveloping the brigade decisive operation. Shaping Operation 2, Weapons Squad. Your first task is to suppress ALF on Objective Gold in order to provide a platoon decisive operation freedom of maneuver. Your second task is to block ALF on Axis Red 2 at Battle Position 2 along Phase Line Seahawks in order to prevent the ALF from enveloping the Brigade Decisive Operation. And Shaping Operation 3, First Squad. Your first task is to secure avenues of approach leading to Objective Gold in order to prevent enemy reinforcements from massing on the objective. Your second task is to block ALF on Axis Red 2 at Battle Position 2 along Phase Line Seahawks in order to prevent the ALF from enveloping the Brigade Decisive Operation. Purpose of Significant Warfighting Functions Maneuver The purpose of maneuver is to deny all ALF freedom of maneuver on objective gold and prevent ALF access into AO Highlander from the south. Fires the purpose of fires is to prevent ALF from maneuvering on the DO before and during the attack on Objective Gold. Following the attack on Objective Gold, fires will disrupt ALF movement north along Axis Red. Priority of fires will go to the decisive operation throughout this operation. Mission Command. The purpose of Mission Command is to coordinate reconnaissance information from the battalion scouts in order to support the company decisive operation and synchronize attacks on Objectives Gold, Silver, bronze, and battle positions 1, 2, and 3. Sustainment. The purpose of sustainment is to resupply 1st platoon at battle position 2 in order to prepare for defensive operations. Scheme of movement and maneuver. Phase 1 is preparation. This begins with the receipt of this order and ends with 1st squad SPs from the company Alpha Alpha, Alpha Alpha Black. Key tasks during this phase include planning, orders production, TLPs, rehearsals, and PCC's PCIs. The company mortar section will be co-located with us throughout the operation in order to provide indirect fire support on objective gold. 
We will cross phase line red no later than 2300. At the completion of this phase, we have SP'd and we are en route to objective gold. Next phase is phase two, infiltration. I will now orient you to the terrain model. Scheme of movement and maneuver. Allow me to orient you to my terrain model. This is north, that is south, east, and west. Boxing you in, northern boundary of this terrain model is the 9-3 northing, southern boundary is the 8-5 northing, eastern boundary is the 0-9 easting, and the western boundary is the 0-1 easting. Tracing you in, we have Hanson Creek Road running east to west, Badger Pocket Road running north-south, and North Fort Moon Creek running diagonally through our AO. We also have Manastash Ridge to the northwest, Badger Gap to the northeast, and Silica DZ to the southwest, as well as Interstate 82 to the west. Phase 2, Infiltration. These routes are in accordance with the Planning Bay Board for KDVTMK. We are currently located here at Alpha Alpha Black, vicinity Gulf Sierra 068921. First leg of the movement on the yellow thread, which is our primary route, is 650 meters at a 251 degree azimuth, taking approximately 15 minutes as we will be moving on foot throughout this operation to checkpoint one. From checkpoint one, we will move 700 meters at a 232 degree azimuth, taking about 15 minutes till we hit checkpoint two, which is also the location for AXP one. That is located at Gulf Sierra 05. 679140. From checkpoint 2, we'll move 950 meters at a 232 degree azimuth, taking about 20 minutes, to checkpoint 3. From checkpoint 3, we'll move 900 meters at a 232 degree azimuth, taking about 20 minutes, where we'll hit checkpoint 4. From checkpoint 4, we'll move 700 meters at a 232 degree azimuth, taking about 15 minutes to where we hit security halt prior to the ORP. Briefing our alternate route. From our start point, we'll move 1,850 meters at a 264 degree azimuth, taking about 40 minutes as we're moving on foot to checkpoint one. From checkpoint one, we'll move 1,300 meters at a 255 degree azimuth to checkpoint two, taking about 30 minutes. From checkpoint two, we'll move an additional 1,800 meters at a 250 degree azimuth, taking about 40 minutes until we hit checkpoint three. From checkpoint three, we'll move 1,100 meters at a 184 degree azimuth, taking about 25 minutes to checkpoint four. From checkpoint four, we'll move 250 degrees at a 96 degree azimuth to our security halt prior to the ORP. Once we have hit the security halt prior to the ORP in either route, we will get into a short halt posture. Once we have moved into the short halt posture and conducted sills, we will bring in the leader's recon for the ORP, which will consist of myself, the RTO, Specialist Wright, the FO, Corporal Martin, the Weapons Squad Leader, Staff Sergeant Murphy, all of Security Squad, the Assault 2 Saw, Specialist Grady, and the Ammo Bearers for a total of 16 packs. Once we have brought them all in and we have confirmed the count, I will issue the five point contingency plan to the platoon sergeant who will then disseminate it amongst the line. The platoon sergeant and the medic will then count us out from the choke point where we will move. 350 meters at a 215 degree azimuth to the ORP. Once we have hit the six o'clock position of the ORP, we'll stop and conduct sills. Once sills is complete, the gun two ammo bearer, the FO, and the weasel will form the six o'clock position and begin counting us in. Security squad will form a line oriented towards the 12 o'clock position of the ORP with myself and the Assault 2 SAW on the left side, the weapon squad leader and the FO on the right side. From there we'll move approximately 75 meters to the 12 o'clock position, clearing our ORP. When we call halt, 
will sit in that line and that will be the 12 o'clock position of the ORP. From there, the weapon squad leader and I will cross at the 6 o'clock of the security line inspecting the positions. Once we have determined it is satisfactory, I will issue the five point contingency plan to the weapon squad leader who will then count myself and the RTO out as we move back towards the objective. Myself and the RTO will then call ahead to the platoon sergeant ensuring that he gets the men in a short halt posture as our far recognition signal. Once we are within 50 meters of the security halt, we will give him the near recognition signal which is IR flash in accordance with the number combination. Once we have entered in the security halt, we will begin moving out towards the ORP and we will sit in our positions. Once the ORP has been established, we will conduct SILS. Once SILS has been completed, we will then bring in the leader's recon for the objective, which is Assault 1 Squad Leader Sergeant McConney, Assault 2 Squad Leader Sergeant Combs, the Weapons Squad Leader Staff Sergeant Murphy, the SNO team, Sergeant Rayburn and Specialist Geenap, myself, the FO, Corporal Martin, and all of Security Squad for a total of 16. Once we have issued the five point contingency plan to the platoon sergeant, myself and the remainder of the leader's recon will move out towards the objective. This is our blow up of objective gold for the train model. Allow me to orient you here is north, south, east, and west. We have six buildings comprising this village located on objective gold. This is building one, two, three, four, five, and six. We template a squad size enemy element is on the objective. This is how we have them arrayed, but truly we won't know until we have confirmed, changed, or aborted the mission based off of the leader's recon. We have four pre-planned fires on this objective, starting with Alpha Bravo 0001, located on this intersection. Alpha Bravo 1001, which is a 60mm mortar target, is located in the center of the village. Alpha Bravo 1002 is located on this guard shack. And Alpha Bravo 1003 is located on the hilltop. Our tentative TRPs that we have established for the support by fire, we have TRP1 on this hilltop, TRP2 associated with building 2, TRP3 which is associated with building 5, TRP4 associated with building 4, and TRP5 associated with this hilltop. Once the leader of recon has left the ORP, we will establish the release point where we will conduct SILs. Once SILs has been completed, myself, the FO, Corporal Martin, and the SNO team, Sergeant Rayburn, and Specialist Geenat, will move up the hill and set in on the hilltop where we will confirm, change, or abort the mission based on what we see as the ground truth. I will also be checking to see if this is a good location for the support by a fire. If it meets my criteria, then I will move back down and get the weapon squad leader, but not after I have given the five point contingency plan and the compromise plan to the SNO team, as well as instructions to create four identical sketches of the objective one for myself, one for the support by fire, and one for each of the assault elements. If I feel like this is not an adequate place for the support by fire, I will still go back and grab the weapon squad leader, but then we will recon a new location for the SPF to set in. Once we have confirmed the SPF location, we will also confirm the restrictive fire line that we have tentatively set in at 297 degree azimuth as well as their sectors of fire and gun positions. Once we have confirmed that, I'll move back to the release point. From the release point, we'll grab both security elements as well as Assault 1 and Assault 2 squad leaders. We'll sit in Security Alpha team, ensuring that we give them a five-point contingency plan as well as engagement criteria and a compromise plan. We'll then move to the Security Bravo team position where we will give them the same five-point contingency plan as well as a compromise plan. We will ensure that both security elements have radios, AT4s, and claymores. On our way back from Security Bravo Team, we will recon both Assault 1 and Assault 2 lanes, 
ensuring that their assault lanes have good fields of fire up the hill to the guard shack, and they have the ability to divide the objective amongst the two of them. Once they have satisfactorily reconned their positions, we'll move back to the release point. From the release point, I'll go back over to the SNO element, issue them a new five point contingency plan, and gather their sketches. After I've tied off with the SNO, I'll move back to the release point where I'll give a far recognition signal to Team Sar, ensuring that the men are up in a short haul posture. While I have been conducting this leader's recon, the platoon sergeant has been prepping men, weapons, and equipment, and has gotten the rucksacks in accordance with the ruck plan. Once I am within 50 meters of the objective, I will give him the near recognition signal. The platoon sergeant and the medic will then count the leader's recon back in. At this point, we will disseminate the information that we have gotten from the leader's recon, including the sketches to the leaders. Once we have disseminated the information, everyone is ready to go. Order of movement out of the ORP will be Assault 1, followed by Support, and then Assault 2. We will leave behind two men as the ORP security element so they can guard the rucksacks. We will issue them a five-point contingency plan prior to leaving the ORP. We will then move up to the release point. From the release point, myself, the FO, and the weapon squad leader, along with the support element, will move up the hill and link up with the SNO team utilizing the near recognition signal. Once the support by fire has laid into their positions, we will move back down to the release point where I will gather the assault elements. We will then move around the objective and then place them into their attack positions. At this point, we will initiate the raid by calling for mortars. We will tentatively call on targets Alpha Bravo 1001, 1002, and 1003. Once the rounds have begun impacting, support by fire will begin engaging between TRP-1 and TRP-2. At this point, the assault elements will begin creeping up the hill. The pace plan for the shift fire signals will be as follows. Primary is radio. Alternate is rock with chem light attached to it. Contingency is voice, and emergency is runner. As they begin creeping up the hill, support by fire will shift in between TRP-2 and TRP-3. The assault elements will then clear the shack at the top, and begin pushing down the hill. Once they have cleared the top of the hill, support by fire will then shift in between TRP-3 and TRP-4. Assault 1's assault lane is Building 2 and Building 4. Assault 2's assault lane is Building 3 and Building 5 and 6. Once the assault elements have shown clear on Buildings 2 and 3, and are ready to push to buildings 4 and 5, I will call support by fire to shift fire to TRP-5. At this point, they will continue in their assault lanes and move to the next buildings. Once they have called all clear in buildings 4 and 5, assault 2 will then push out to building 6 and clear building 6. Once assault 2 has called all clear on building 6, we'll then push to the base of the hill to our LOA and we will tell the support by fire element to lift fire. We're at the LOA, squad leaders will get lace reports and I will have EPW clear report to me. I will give instructions on how I want them to clear the objective with clear task, condition, standards, and a time hack and then push them out to clear the objective. Once they have finished that, they will come back to me. If we have sustained any casualties at this point in the operation, I will call for primary aid and litter. If we have sustained no casualties, then I will call for EPW and search. They will again report to me, and I will give them instructions on how I want them to search. RTO, you will be calling out the time that has been elapsed on every minute that we are on the objective. When the EPW search team is going through, I want you to call out everything that you find on the objective. And RTO, I want you to repeat it back out and record it. Once you've completed this, consolidate all enemy weapons and essential equipment at my position. I'll then call primary demo to my location. It'll be Graves and Zimmer. We'll then begin withdrawal plan. With the call of red, the assault elements will move back to the choke point that the platoon sergeant has created back by the release point. Guns will move to bipod. 
on the call of white support by a fire will collapse up and will move back to the choke point. On the call of blue burning, demo team will ignite the fuse and we'll begin moving back toward the choke point. Security elements, you are going to be moving back straight back to the ORP. Bravo team, you're moving 550 meters at a 121 degree azimuth. Alpha team, you're moving 450 meters at a 128 degree azimuth, straight back to the ORP. Once the platoon sergeant has collapsed the choke point, we have all moved back to the ORP. We will ruck up and we will begin moving south towards battle position two. That concludes phase three attack. We'll now move into phase four defense. Following the attacks, we will move to battle position two, Senator Gulf Sierra 057861 in accordance with our pre-established KDD TMK post on the board. Again, yellow thread is primary route, red thread is alternate route. We'll begin by moving from the ORP to checkpoint 5. It is 1,200 meters at a 180 degree azimuth, which should take approximately 20 minutes. From there, we'll move to checkpoint 6, which is 1,000 meters at a 180 degree azimuth, taking about 20 minutes as well. We'll then move from checkpoint 6 to checkpoint 7, moving 395 meters at a 130 degree azimuth, taking approximately 10 minutes. From checkpoint 7 to checkpoint 8, it's 590 meters at a 125 degree azimuth, taking approximately 15 minutes. From there, we'll move from checkpoint 8 to checkpoint 9, moving 840 meters at a 102 degree azimuth, taking approximately 20 minutes. From checkpoint 9 to checkpoint 10 is 1,000 meters at a 117 degree azimuth, taking approximately 20 minutes. And finally, from checkpoint 10 to battle position 2 is 300 meters at a 118 degree azimuth, taking approximately 10 minutes. For the alternate route, we'll move from our ORP to checkpoint 5, which is 3,200 meters at a 135 degree azimuth, taking approximately 50 minutes. From checkpoint 5 to checkpoint 6 is 1,375 meters at a 146 degree azimuth, taking approximately 30 minutes. From checkpoint 6 to checkpoint 7 is 800 meters at a 123 degree azimuth take approximately 20 minutes and finally from checkpoint 7 to battle position 2 is 525 meters at a 213 degree azimuth taking approximately 15 minutes. Once we have established in battle position 2 we will call up Opsked Black. All movement SOPs and battle drills are posted underneath the regimental crest and are in effect during this operation. Scheme of fires, this is my fires overlay orienting you north, south, east, and west. Here's our company area of operation. We're currently located here at Alpha Alpha Black. Plot CR, our first target, is located here, Alpha Bravo 0001. The purpose is to prevent the enemy from massing combat power on our forces. Location is Gulf Sierra 02738960. The observer will be myself. The alternate observer is the RTO. Trigger will be on order on the fires net, 42225. The resource is two 81mm mortars. It is a point target. The second of our pre-planned fires is Alpha Bravo 0004. Purpose is the same, to prevent the enemy from massing combat power on our forces. Location is Gulf Sierra 05698569. The observer is myself. Alternate observer is the RTO. Trigger will again be on order on the fires net 42225 using two 81 millimeter mortars on a linear target spanning north south on this road. Priority of 81 millimeter and 120 millimeter mortars is to Alpha Company. 
priority of company 60 millimeter mortar fires is to us, 1st Platoon. All calls for fire will be in order of precedence. Elements in contact, identified enemy indirect fire locations, and other identified enemy hard sites. Task board units, planning tasks, assault one squad leader, you designated Graves and Zimmer for the primary demo team. Salt 2, you designated Stark and Phipps for primary aid and litter, as well as Cooper and Stone for primary EPW. Security squad leader, you designated Wall and Brown for primary compass and pace. Salt 2, you designated Ferris and Lund for alternate demo. Salt 1, you designated Kelleher and Bauer for alternate aid and litter, as well as Hassenfluke and Craig for alternate EPW. And security squad leader, you designated Hyatt and Buck for alternate compass and pace. Salt 1, you also designated Rayburn and Geenap for surveillance and observation team, as well as alternate was McFarland and Barkowski. Task supporting units, tactical tasks, security squad, first squad, your task is to provide left and right security on the roads leading to the objective. Purpose is to prevent the enemy reinforcements from massing on the objective. You're responsible for navigation during the operation in order to move the platoon undetected throughout the area of operation. You're providing near side security during the LDA crossings in order to minimize risk of detection during the LDA crossings, and you are first in the order of movement. Salt 1, second squad. You're second in the order of movement. You're responsible for actions on the objective in order to prevent the northern advance of ALF from the town of Yakima. You're also providing surveillance and observation on the objective during the leader's reconnaissance in order to maintain contact with the enemy and provide security for the leader's recon. Headquarters. We're third in the order of movement. It'll be myself, the platoon sergeant, RTO, the FO, and the medic. RTO, you're responsible for calling out the time elapsed on the objective in minutes in order to ensure that the time on target is minimized. FO, you're responsible for calling in fire on pre-established targets in order to provide freedom of maneuver for the decisive operation. Medic, you're going to be conducting tactical combat casualty care with aid and litter on any casualties that we sustain in order to minimize deaths of friendly forces. Platoon Sergeant, you and the medic will coordinate and facilitate CASVAC. Same purpose. RTO, you're going to be calling up all ops get codes to the company commander in order to provide him with a clear picture of the battlefield. Support squad, weapon squad, you're going to be providing suppressive fires on the objective in order to allow freedom of maneuver for the DO. You're assisting in far side security during the LDA crossings in order to provide maximum firepower to the security if we are detected. Salt 2, you are fourth in the order of movement. You are assisting in actions on the objective in order to allow freedom of maneuver for the DO. And you are providing far side security during the LDA crossings in order to minimize risk of detection throughout the AO. Coordinate instructions order of movement will be first squad, gun team 1, second squad, gun team 2, and third squad. Utilize movement formations appropriate to the situation at TC. However, squads should attempt to remain in traveling overwatch due to the enemy situation in our AO. Use bounding overwatch when necessary. Methods for marking PZs. Day will be via 17 panel. Verify color with pilots on approach. Smoke if we are in thick vegetation. During night, we'll use IR or blue chem light spun in circle on the end of 550 cord. Rehearsal priority. Actions on the objective. React to contact. Crossing an LDA. CASAVAC, and then as per subunit needs. Timeline. All times will be in uniform and all dates are in August 2018. We are here, 1500. Next time hack will be 1700 rehearsals in the platoon bay. Everyone will be there. After that, we're conducting final checks at 2000, also here. And at 2300, we're crossing phase line red out of Alpha Alpha Black. There it's 2345, we'll cross phase line white, checkpoint 3, RTO called the odds get for that. No later than 045, we'll be occupying the ORP at this grid. No later than 0045, we'll be kicking out the leader's recon from the ORP to the objective, that will be the leader's recon element. No later than 0100, we're in the attack position on objective gold, that's assault 1 and 2. At 0600, we initiate the raid on objective gold. No later than 0700, the raid is complete. No later than 0730, we cross phase line blue. 
Cindy Gall Sierra 030890 and no later than 1500 battle position 2 is set at Gall Sierra 057861. CCIR PIR does the enemy have any mortars or ammunition present or do they have any nods or small arms that we don't know about? Are there any logistical supplies present and what do they consist of? What are the enemy vehicles by type and paint scheme? And is there any evidence of drug trafficking? FFIR, any loss of mission essential equipment, weapons, combo, or nods. If the patrol is compromised, contact during movement, or failure to meet mission no later than time, and any wounded in action or killed in action sustained. EEFI, any operational overlays, opskeds, or SOIs. Engagement criteria. If you are compromised by squad sized elements or smaller, close with and destroy the enemy with fire and maneuver. If you are compromised by a reinforced platoon or larger, use direct and indirect fires to fix the enemy force until we can maneuver with the remainder of the company to finish the enemy. Avoid contact with all civilians and civilian vehicles. Treat them as enemy sympathizers. Reporting. Report all applicable op skids and checkpoints to the platoon RTO on the platoon frequency. Control measures. Phase line red will be called out as we are leaving the Alpha Alpha. Phase line white follows the 92 Northern grid line. Phase line blue follows the objective road. All phase lines will be reported to facilitate command and control and minimize the risk of fratricide. Sustainment support concept. Deploy with all mission essential equipment. Company trains will be co-located with the company CP, Alpha Alpha Black, which will displace as necessary throughout the AO. Resupply will be conducted daily at approximately 0700 unless otherwise coordinated. Materials and services. Submit resupply requests no later than 0400 daily using the Lima 1 report. Evacuate all friendly wounded in action and killed in action as the situation allows. Captured enemy equipment will be recorded to include type, number, and frequencies. Do not destroy cell phones or laptops. We will exploit them for information. Medical evac, air and ground are available upon request, situation dependent. Request using a nine line medevac request on the company net. Class one cycle is Mike, 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 deploying with six MREs per. Class five is ammunition. This is what we have on hand for the operation. Five, five, six, loose, we have 8,000 rounds. Five, five, six, link, we have 6,000 rounds for the saws. We have 4,000 rounds of 762 link. 140 Mike Mike grenades, 6 AT4s, 3 M18A1 anti-personnel claymores, 4 blocks of C4 for demo, and 50 M67 frags. Class 7 is none. Class 8 medical. We have 1 medic with 8 bag, 4 CLS bags, and 2 SCEDCOs. For Class 10, we have 200 AA batteries, 200 lithium batteries, three boxes of red chem lights, and three boxes of IR chems. Transportation is none. Command and signal. Command. Location of hire leader. The company commander will be located with us throughout the duration of the operation. Hire succession of command. Chain of command will be myself, followed by Sergeant First Class Ashworth, Staff Sergeant Murphy as weapon squad leader, Staff Sergeant Andrecchio as first squad leader, Sergeant Hani as second squad leader, and Sergeant Combs as third squad leader. Frequencies. Company frequency will be 36000. Tune frequency is 33000. And the fire net is 42225. Call signs. The company CP will be Hotel Charlie Papa. The CO is Apex 6. The first sergeant is Apex 7. Myself will be Apex 16. Tune sergeant is Apex 17. The FO is Apex 15. First squad leader, you are Apex 1 1. Second squad leader, you are Apex 1 2. Third squad leader, you are Apex 1 3. And weapon squad leader, you are Apex 1 4. Pyro is none. Code words and op skeds. Gold corresponds with crossing the LD. Green corresponds with crossing phase line white. Red corresponds with ORP set. White corresponds with in attack position. Blue corresponds with raid initiated. Silver corresponds with crossing phase line blue, and black corresponds with battle position set. Challenge password. Challenge will be aces. Password is wolf. Number combination is nine, 
Running password is Eagle. Recognition signals near and far. During the day for near, it will be VS-17 panel. At night, it will be IR flash. For far, it is radio for both. Admin notes, the packing list had been listed here. Squad leaders, ensure that your men are packed in accordance with it. Time is now 15.50. What are your questions? Okay, if you don't have any questions for me, then I have some questions for you as part of my confirmation brief. Final step of the TLP process is supervise and refine. However, this happens throughout the TLP process. Leaders refine the plan, perform coordinations, and make assessments. If necessary, leaders will update their plan through a fragmentary order or FRAGO. This also follows a five paragraph op order format and is used to update or modify the original order. Leaders will monitor personnel, equipment, mission knowledge, and mission preparedness. Critical are conducting rehearsals of which there are five types. A confirmation brief or back brief is typically used right after the op order. This brief is used for subordinates to brief the leader that they have an understanding of their task purpose and intent of the mission. A back brief will be conducted later after subordinates go through their planning process and update the leader on what their plan is and how it is nested into the overall plan. An ideal form of rehearsal is a combined arms rehearsal or CAR. This can either be done in a reduced force or full dress. These types of rehearsals give subordinates a very clear understanding of where they're at in space and time during the operation and how they relate to other adjacent units. Additionally, there are support rehearsals and battle drill or SOP rehearsals. Rehearsals are key to mission success.